Okay, in this video, I'm going to take a look at some limits at infinity. We're going to talk about a definition for some horizontal asymptotes, and then we're going to specifically deal with some rules that deal with this limits at infinity. And then I'm going to go through two examples that kind of implement this and show you how to work out a, a limit at infinity. All right, but so for some background information, you really do need to know the definition of a horizontal asymptote, not maybe one that you learned when you were in Algebra 2 or Pre-Calc, all right, but one that has um, its basis in calculus. And then we'll We'll go through some special things that we can look at as our um, x approaches either infinity or negative infinity. Okay, so for this uh, horizontal asymptote, the line y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of the graph of f if the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x equals l or the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals l. Alright, so that's giving us a basis of, you know, horizontal asymptote, what's happening out there as x approaches either positive infinity or negative infinity, okay? And if it approaches, if those limits approach a number l, then we know that we're going to have a horizontal asymptote there at y equals l. And then as you continue on with this in your study of calculus, they introduce this definition, they show you how to find the limits at infinity, and then later on, then they're going to want you to apply the fact that maybe in your curve sketching that if you need to find a horizontal asymptote, then you can take the limit as x approaches infinity or negative infinity to find that horizontal asymptote. Okay, um, for your limits at infinity here, we've got if r is a positive number and c is any real number, then we know that the limit as x approaches infinity of c over x raised to the r power is going to go to zero. And this this right here is going to become very, very important. You're going to need to know, you know, when that, that base of an exponential function there is going to infinity and you've got a real number on top, then those are going to zero. So we can cross them out and get them out of our problem. It's going to make things a lot easier. All right, and then anytime that you've got this x to the r and it's definitely designed uh, defined for values less than zero, then if your limit is approaching negative infinity, then c over um, x to the r also goes to zero. Okay, so this handles, takes care of your um, negative infinities. Okay, now we'll do uh, two examples of implementing this. We'll do kind of an easy one and then we'll do a second one that's a little more challenging. Okay, so in this first example here, just straight polynomial curves that has some of this c over um, x to the r power. So we've got something like that showing up automatically in it. All right, now we know that um, if it's a polynomial function, you can take the limit of each individual terms. All right, whether or not you actually show that step is, is up to you, but we could do the limit as x approaches infinity of 5 minus the limit as x approaches infinity of this 2 over x squared. Okay, now we know that the limit as x approaches infinity of a constant is just going to be a constant here, so I know this is 5. All right, and then you've got to get used to seeing this. You've got that real number over an x to the r, and x is approaches infinity. So this, by the definition that we just gave over there, is this whole term here is approaching 0, so then my limit is just going to be 5. Okay, so that's straightforward implementation of that rule. Okay, now, let's suppose we've got a rational function like this. If we've got a rational function like this, obviously we don't have anything that looks like this. We don't have, you know, that set up like that. We do have a limit approaching infinity, but it's a rational function. Now, there is a rule or a technique for solving these types of limits. All right, rational limits where x is approaching infinity. All right, you are allowed to divide through by the highest power of x in the denominator. When you do that, you're going to divide the denominator and divide the numerator by that highest power of x. All right, then you're going to end up with some of these fractional parts where you're going to be able to go, oh, this goes to zero, this goes to zero, we can just cross them out. Now, before you try any of that, though, you should always try that direct substitution to make sure that um, it's going to be one where you have to go farther and try another technique. If I did that on this, I would be plugging in as a direct substitution. I would do, you know, 2 times infinity minus 1 all over infinity plus 1. All right, well, a big number times 2 minus 1 is still going to give me a really big number. 
and then a really big number plus one, well, we're still going to give me a really big number there. I've got infinity over infinity, all right, and we know, hopefully at this point, you know that this is an indeterminate form. So by doing the direct substitution there, you see you get that indeterminate form, and then you've got to go one step farther. Okay, so I am going to apply this technique of dividing through by the highest power of x in my denominator. So I'm going to look at my denominator. I've got an x to the first, so I'm going to divide every term by an x. So I'm going to go the limit as x approaches infinity. All right, I'm going to divide every power, or every term, by x to the first power. So I'm going to have a 2x over an x minus a 1 over x all over an x over an x plus a 1 over x. All right, on my next step, I'm going to do any type of simplifying that I can in my problem. All right, so x over x there would cancel. That's going to leave me a 2 right there. All right, and then this 1 over x, I'm just going to leave as 1 over x. x over x simplifies to a 1, and 1 over x, I'm just going to leave as 1 over x. All right, now I've got this real number in the top and x to the first power. So I've set this up for this very well here. All right, if I take the limit as x approaches infinity, these two are constants, and these two terms are going to go to zero. All right, so this guy is going to approach zero, and this guy is going to approach zero. All right, so when I actually take the limit there, then I'm going to have a 2 over 1, which simplifies down to a 2, because those two terms went to zero. So this is really a really good way of how you're going to implement that, you know, a real number on top of a power, and your limit is approaching infinity. Makes it really nice, eliminates a lot of your terms for you, and makes those limits really, really simple. So um, definitely thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.